Thank you for inviting me. I will be talking about recent experiences and things too. So we often get the question, do you need a postdoc to become a professor? And the short answer is yes. So here's a quote from Dr. Christopher Peterson at the University of Michigan. These days, it's unusual for people to go straight into faculty positions from graduate school unless they were very productive. By very productive, we mean a lot of publications, fellowships, some evidence that you'll actually be successful in a faculty position. And I also like this comic strip from PhD Comics. If anyone reads that, it's fabulous. So a postdoc is almost a requirement for an academic career these days. This is the mentor talking, right? Employers want to see how well you perform as an independent researcher before they hire you. Postdoc says, do I really have that much independence? Well, in theory, no. But given how much I'll ignore you, yes. <laughs> Can I have that in writing? <laughs> so I like this because it sort of illustrates that there's a lot of variety in how mentors train students and what they expect. And of course, as a postdoc, you do want to develop independence as you move through. So what is a postdoc? Let's compare the terms intern and postdoc, again, from my favorite comics. An intern, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is someone who works sometimes for a limited pay at a trade or occupation in order to gain experience. The definition of a postdoc, according to NSF and NIH, is an individual who has received a doctoral degree or equivalent and is engaged in a temporary and defined period of mentored advanced training to enhance the professional skills and research independence needed to pursue his or her chosen career path. So basically, a postdoc is just the academically correct term for an intern. <laughs> but all joking aside, choosing a successful postdoc is probably one of your most important career decisions. When should you start thinking about a postdoc? I'm glad you're all here because the answer is now. Ideally, because you're all here, you're already networking. You have obviously joined professional societies. And so that process should begin about two years before you graduate. Okay? And then about 12 months before you graduate, you want to start looking at job boards, job postings, applying for fellowships, collaborating and getting to know other investigators. And then about six months before you graduate is when you really start applying, if not earlier, and finalizing your options. So where to start looking? Check your email. That's a great place to start because you are a member of a professional society. You often will receive job ads. Also through your department, you may receive job ads. Check the department website as well. Ask your existing connections, your mentors, peers, collaborators because a lot of positions are not formally advertised. It may be, hey, I'm looking for somebody. Do you know who might fit this position? Be sure to network and present at research conferences and get to know people and share your research. And don't be afraid of searching the internet. Google is fabulous at finding these types of things, too. There's a lot of job placement sites, and you can go to department websites and professional society websites and search them for postings. And don't be shy. Be sure to show interest in the work of a mentor that you're interested in working with. Ask good questions. Do your homework on what they do. And maybe you can offer some ideas to where the research might progress. So the purpose of a postdoc is really to increase your competitive edge, as well as serve as a segue into a faculty position, which is my topic, or other types of positions. And so it could be to gain a new perspective on a research topic, maybe to expand your expertise, to join an exciting productive research team, maybe to have access to unique tools, tissues, or techniques that could again increase your competitive edge because you'll be an expert in something very special. And it's also a time to focus on your research and professional development without the stress of teaching or seeking funding, sometimes. And I put sometimes in parentheses because maybe you do want to start seeking funding. Maybe you do want to start teaching to gain those experiences. And of course, that's something that you want to talk about with a prospective mentor. And if you haven't already published a paper from your graduate studies, you should definitely be publishing during your postdoc. And ideally, these will be first authored publications. Okay? So some factors to consider when searching for a postdoc are the mentor, the location and cost of living, funding, 
networking and professional development opportunities, as well as the fit. And we're going to go through each of these. Okay? So let's start with mentor. I like this diagram here because it really illustrates how the mentor and the trainee have a sharing of ideas. It's an idea transfer time. And the mentor is the person who is going to have the most impact on your postdoctoral trainings. So this is perhaps your biggest consideration when looking for a postdoc. It's important to consider personality. Can you even get along with this person for three years, right? or however long you stay? Do they have special skills and tools that you can learn? What is their rank? Are they an established or new investigator? And both have their advantages. An established investigator has rank and reputation and probably good funding. A new investigator may also have good funding through startup packages, maybe new grants, but they may also be more likely to be hands-on in the lab more often. Reputation, of course, is important. Funding status, do they have sufficient funding for three to five years to support you? What is their granting history, funding history? Will you be expected or encouraged to find your own funding? And the lab environment, are there technicians available? Does the lab have up-to-date computers and technology? In other words, will you be able to do the research that you plan to do? And the training record of the mentor. Okay, so with respect to the training record, you want to look at where the past trainees are today. Are they moving up in the academic rank, obtaining higher positions, or are they moving more laterally and are maybe not as successful? Are the current trainees receiving quality training in research and professional development so they can be successful? And to find that out, it's a really good idea to talk with current and former trainees Call them up, send them an email, ask them what their experience was like. Look them up on the internet, see where they are. You have to remember that you are interviewing the lab just as much, if not more, than they are interviewing you. Okay, so going back to mentoring style, you want to see whether or not you will have the freedom to work independently. Or is your PI a micromanager? Maybe micromanaging is a really good thing in the beginning as you're learning techniques but maybe you need more independence, hopefully, near the end, so you can become an independent investigator. Will they support you as an aspiring academic and not cheap labor? Although it's not cheap anymore with NIH funding rates, right? Will you receive extra training in professional development, or will you be treated like an advanced student? Okay, these are really important things to consider. Will projects be assigned to you, or will you be able to design or choose your own project? Maybe at first it's a good idea to have projects assigned because you might not be as familiar with what you can do in the lab, but hopefully by the end you're developing some independence, thinking of your own ideas, maybe applying for funding to support those ideas. Location and cost of living is another important consideration. So this is the housing cost index. If you're going to live in one of the red areas, you obviously need a little bit more funding, a lot more funding, than some of the green areas. Okay? So these are the NIH projected postdoctoral stipend levels. This is for this year. And so with zero years of experience, you can expect about $3,900 a month, which might be more than enough in certain parts of the country, but in other parts of the country, you might need three or four roommates to make that work, right? Also be sure to ask if your salary includes benefits. Will you have to pay for parking? Will you have to pay for health insurance? Things like that. Other location considerations are family. Maybe you want to move closer to family. Maybe you want to move further from family. Maybe you have your own nuclear family or significant other that you have to consider when looking at these places. Will they have opportunities where you go? Are there things to do? Or will you be bored? <laughs> What's the population size? Are you OK with a small town? Or do you prefer a big city, right? And climate, that was a huge factor for me when I was looking at postdocs. I don't know how I ended up at Arizona State. That didn't really work out so well. But another important location consideration, at least for me, is how accessible is coffee where I'm going? Funding opportunities. Now, oftentimes, of course, if you're going into a postdoc, hopefully they have immediate funding for you 
right? You're not applying for fellowships to get into the postdoc. But while you're there, you want to see if there's intramural and extramural funding. So you can start adding that to your CV that you're able to get grant funding on your own. So intramural funding, oftentimes universities will have programs where you can apply for research funding, travel, maybe training grants that you can be put on. And extramural funding would be applying for like an NIH or NSF fellowship. Professional societies often have this kind of support too in private organizations. So I put a few examples. Another very important consideration is professional development opportunities. Sure, you may be great in research, but what about everything else that it takes to be successful as a faculty member? Will you have those tools to be successful after leaving the postdoc? So not just research, but also publications. Do they have courses, maybe, to help you enhance your writing skills for publications? And do they have, like, grantsmanship workshops, things like that, to help you prepare your grants? Do they have classes to help you learn more teaching skills or mentoring skills? And will you have opportunities for teaching and mentoring? Maybe you want those, maybe you don't. And of course, any career development workshops aside from those. Sometimes they'll have how to develop a CV, personal statements, things like that. Okay, so definitely check into that. Networking opportunities, you want to be able to interact with peers and professionals. And so this could be through regular seminars. Does the department have regular seminars that you can attend? Are there journal clubs where you can talk about current research with your peers and professionals? How often does the laboratory go to conferences? Are there regional, national, international conferences? Are there even local poster sessions at the university itself? Will you be able to serve on campus committees? Maybe you want to, maybe you don't, but that's something to think about to gain that service experience. And lastly, an important consideration is fit. What is the fit with respect to personality? Again, can you get along with the mentor and the people in the lab? Is it a collaborative environment where everybody works on the same project, or is it more of a competitive environment where people work on their own projects and compete? Will you be expected to work from nine to five, or only when experiments need to be done? I've seen a variety of students in my lab with respect to that. Are you okay with a tight budget and space? Maybe more of a new investigator type atmosphere, or would you prefer a lot of money and resources? Okay. Again, it depends on the mentor. Are you willing to budge on any of these topics? Do you prefer a business-only environment where you just come in, do your job, and go home? Or do you prefer more of a family atmosphere where there's external activities, maybe barbecues and things people go to, social events as a lab group? And then again, going back to the comic, how much attention do you really need or even want at that stage? And do you prefer a large lab or a small lab? Large labs can be great because you can be involved in a lot of projects and get your name on a lot of publications. A small lab is also great because you could be one of two authors on a paper and show more of an input. But you might have less people to interact with and bounce ideas off of. So really, the question of a person, perfect postdoc, how do you find the perfect postdoc? The answer is the perfect postdoc doesn't exist. Sorry, but you can find the best fit for you. Thank you.